Hey there, lovers of Flaming Sword Ministries. We come bearing glad tidings of joy. Please tell someone to tell someone that the Flaming Sword Ministries International now has an app. Yes, we just launched an app where you and your loved ones can watch all our exciting and life-changing movies and talk shows for free. You heard right. It's absolutely free at no cost to you. The Flaming Sword Ministry app is completely personalized for you. It features our short and full-length movies, talk show programs, and music videos. It's user-friendly, easy to navigate, and the picture quality is top-notch, HD quality. Android users can download the app from Google Play Store. iOS users can download the app from the Apple App Store. What are you waiting for? Head on now to the App Store to download the app today. And remember to spread the word. God bless you. Hello, lovers of Flaming Sword Ministries. We're back again with an exciting news for you. Have you ever wondered how nice it would be for you to be able to buy and download Flaming Sword books online from our own app? We have! And that's why we have just launched the Flaming Sword ebook store where you can purchase and download our daily drama devotional and other material that will sharpen your spiritual mind and strengthen your walk with the Lord. The Flaming Sword Ministry online ebook app is completely personalized just for you. It is user friendly with no lags, drags, or annoying glitches. Android users and iPhone users, what are you waiting for? Please head on to your Google Play Store or App Store to download the app today. And remember, remember to spread the word. God bless you. And now you are chattering that same hope that you gave to me. Well, it is not too late for you to go and try another man outside. Okay, 
Thank you once again, Mrs. Brown, for agreeing to meet with me again. You are welcome. And please, feel free to call me Dumi. Okay, Dumi. Dumi, okay. So what is it that you wanted us to talk about? Hmm. Once again, I truly, truly appreciate you making our time to meet with me today. Actually, I had a follow-up question from the interview I had with you and your husband on the show. Mm. And it's quite personal too, so I figured it's best for us to meet here today. Oh, okay. I'm all here. Um, I'd like to introduce myself to you. Um, you know, you already know that I host a TV show. Um, I'm married with three amazing kids. But one thing you don't know is that I have the sickle cell trait as well. Really? Yes. Wow. Did you agree to anchor the show because of your health status? Mm, not really. Not really. Not really. You know, uh, my program manager reached out to me a few years ago um, about this huge grant that was awarded to our TV station from the sickle cell Texas Mac Thomas Foundation. The grant was given to support a TV program that would provide more awareness and education to the public about sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait. And my manager needed someone to, you know, host the show. I was, I remember I was only an intern then, but God gave me favor in, in our sight and she chose me for the job. Um, and I've been hosting the show for, let's say, yeah, uh, for 10 years now. And just only informed him a few years ago. Um, about my genotype and you know about my trait so anchoring a love beyond the storm show has become a ministry for me mm -hmm. it's an avenue for me you know to spread the love of christ to all and sundry <laughs> that is amazing i also have been watching your show since i was a single lady in fact i had to stop watching it at a time because it was becoming uncomfortable for me and you already know my story but i must say that you're really good at what you do thank you thank you thank you so much you know um i have hosted a quite number of people on my show but i must say that your story resonates with me the most there was just something about you and your husband that stood out to me yes you would have a very unique testimony and yes your faith your faith oh my goodness your faith is one of a kind marrying someone with sickle cell trait was not an option for me and you know uh, i thank god that the thought didn't even appeal to me at, as at then it was it wasn't even up for consideration i must confess but your story really challenged me ever since i interviewed both of you i've been you know my faith has been strengthened and i constantly ask god to strengthen my faith in him more and more <laughs> i'm glad to hear that because you know our faith is the anchor of our hope in god and even the bible says in hebrews 11 verse 6 but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him amen amen but my question to you is were there times that you question your decision to marry your husband like i mean did your faith ever get tested to the point that you were like you're giving up on god and on your marriage <laughs> it did a couple of times actually i remember a particular day when things got very messy hmm. Okay. 
Take this. Take this. <laughs> You're good. Thank you, Bobby. You're good. <laughs> to take a deep breath, okay? Take a deep breath. Another one. You're good. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Thank you, mommy. Now, what, what's going on? I'm tired, mommy. I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> You're tired. You're not so sure. <laughs> it is well with you. What exactly is going on? Everything. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the middle of nowhere. Screaming for help, but no one can hear me. I feel faint and weary. But I am here. I hear you. And I see you. Is this about my granddaughter, goodness? Yes. It's about goodness. It's about Ben. It's about God and I. It's everything. Now. I want us to take this one after the other, okay? Take a deep breath again for me. What is going on between you and Ben? Mom, were there times when you doubted and questioned your love for Dad? Countless times. Okay. Mom, do you remember the time I insisted on marrying Ben? Mm -hmm. Even when you and Dad didn't want to give us your blessings? Exactly. I knew that God wanted me to marry Ben, despite the possibility of birthing a child with a sickle cell disease. You know, I didn't tell you this, but I had a dream that was quite similar to Peter's experience in the book of Matthew chapter 14. I saw myself and Ben walking triumphantly on water, approaching a banquet that was being held for us on the other side of the seashore. I held Ben's hands firmly as we walked on water. I knew for sure that God was assuring me of his presence and peace in my marriage with Ben. Despite that all hearts were against us, but I'm not so sure anymore. Hmm. Make me understand, sweetheart. Give meaning to your words. I'm tired, mommy. My faith in God is wavering. My daughter has been in and out of the hospital in the last two months. <laughs> My husband is complaining that I am not the same woman he married. God has an expectation of me to continue to trust him, but I don't think I have the strength to continue on this journey. I am trying my best to be strong for my family, but my best doesn't seem to be good enough. Sometimes I feel like I am not the type of mother that my daughters need. Mom, I have a child that is really sick and another one that is very healthy and I don't think I'm doing a good job of loving them equally. My mind is so burdened that I can't even pray. How do you do it, Mom? How do you juggle everything without losing your mind? Uluwa <sighs> Domenino. Many daughters. Many wives. 
Many mothers have done well, but you, my darling, you exceed them all. I love you very much. You are doing a great job and don't you ever doubt yourself anymore. You're the best mother to your girls and the best wife to Ben. Your feelings and, and concerns, they are, they are natural. Hmm. I remember the first few years of my marriage to your dad. It was hard. It was really hard. <laughs> and I can tell you that you are handling your challenges far better than I did. This is what I want you to do. I want you to continue to lean on God and fix your eyes on Him. Because when you lean on God, you take the pressure off yourself. From the Bible that you reference about Peter in Matthew chapter 14, I think the story is from verses 22 to 33. The Bible recorded that the minute Peter took his eyes off Jesus to consider what he was doing, he started to sink. The only way you can weather the storms of life without failing, without giving up, is to fix your eyes on Jesus and Jesus alone. Do not let your situations overwhelm you, because if you do, it's going to choke your faith and you will start sinking. But sometimes, it seems as though all hell is let loose against us. Mm. I know. I know. <sighs> Hard times, trials, difficult situations are all the wilds that the enemy use against us to make us to remove our focus from Jesus. He understands that the moment he gets our attention and holds it, it will be easy for him to derail us from the purpose of God for us. That is why he does not give up. That is why he never gets tired. He keeps shooting his fairy darts at us. But your faith must be strong. Ephesians 6.16 says, taking hold of the shield of faith wherewith you are able to withstand to quench all the fiery darts of the of the wicked my dear your faith is a weapon of victory you must not let it go i need you to continue to intercede for yourself and your family I don't even know where to start from or what to pray. Then you ask the Holy Spirit. He is our helper. Have you forgotten? Right. The only way you can prevail in prayer when you are burdened is to speak in your heavenly language. Mm -hmm. Romans 8.26 says that the Spirit helps our weakness for we do not know what we ought to pray. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for you with wordless groans. So you need to depend on him. He is your prayer partner. Okay? Okay. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I just want you to know this, that sometimes when you feel like nobody sees you or nobody hears you, God sees and hears you. So you see, my faith has been tried and tested over and over again. Anyone can claim a strong faith when the going is good, but 
trust me. <laughs> Strong faith is developed in the fullness of affliction. Have your food now. I'm not hungry. Did you eat at work? No. Why is this man doing this? He has refused to speak with me. Now he won't eat. Lord, why is all this happening? <laughs> to God be all the glory. I'm glad you were blessed. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor is not here now. Yeah, he quickly stepped out. But feel free to give him a call. All right, thank you so much. God bless you. Good night. Hmm, Pastor Jones. Night, Pastor. <sighs> Seriously, you're just giving us back to back to back. <laughs> I've never seen you like that before. <laughs> you're so good tonight. <laughs> what can I say? To God be all the glory. Hmm. Really, He's the one who works in us, both to will and to do. All His good pleasures. I hope you were blessed by the program. In fact, I was beyond blessed. <laughs> and I'm sure your husband is so proud of you. <laughs> you know what? Let me just tell you right now. I even need a hundred copies. All my friends in Minnesota, we're going to watch it together. I can't be the only one to get this to your And you know what? I'm just looking forward to telling them. You see that lady preaching? Mm -hmm. That's my cousin. Mm -hmm. I know her. I'm related <laughs> to her. Oh, <laughs> it's so good to have you around. And I know, I know that my visit to Minnesota is long overdue. Mm -hmm. Just give me some more time. You know, Ben and I are working something out and soon we will come visit. Even if it's just the girls and I, we have to come visit you. And I'm gonna hold you to it, so don't make any empty promises. No worries. Okay. Our God is able. Amen. Anyway, I wanted us to talk about you. So, Alpha. Yes. Let me not even lie to you. Things haven't been that great. Mm. I'm 32 years old. I'm still single. I keep meeting all these great guys, but I keep running into the same problem. All of them have the AS genotype. Mm. And you know, you would think that someone with my exposure, my knowledge, I would know not to enter into a marriage that could bring me so much pain. Mm. Doing some just you. So I met this guy. I really like him. He's Christian, 40 years old, successful, okay. and you know, he proposed to me and I just didn't want to go through the same situation again. And so I asked him straight up, no games, mm -hmm. what's your genotype? Dude, can you believe that this guy's never been tested? Are you for real? I'm telling you. And so, as God would have it, when the results came out, <laughs> don't. Just guess, just guess. He has the AS genotype. As if you were there. Wow. And you know what? I just, I've really been weighing the options with us being together medically. You know, me having the sickle set trait and him being AS. Okay. And you know, I just, I don't know any more dunes. You know, recently I was reading the Bible and it talked about how, you know, God's ways are beyond our ways and his thoughts are beyond our thoughts. But why does God keep bringing me guys who are all AS, knowing that I have the sickle cell trait? Even today, I read Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that tells me that his plans for me are of good and not to bring me to calamity, mm -hmm. but to bring me to a hope and a bright future. Don't if I say yes to this guy, is that not me laying the foundation for calamity? Or do you think that God would just make me go through this just so I can be in pain? Hmm. Tom, 
You see, God is intentional about what he does in us, with us, for us, and through us. Is what says in Isaiah 14 verse 24, that everything he intends and purposes for our lives will happen exactly the way he has planned for them to happen. He is the master planner, the designer and the orchestrator of our destinies. And he alone can give the perfect answers to the deepest questions of our hearts. God will not bring us into a painful situation unless there is a point he's trying to prove in our lives, either to us personally or to people around us. And if his plan includes pain, then you can be sure that he intends to use that pain for his glory. Mm. In this situation, you can't possibly put up an advert to say that you're looking for a man with a um, AA genotype to marry you simply because there is a pattern. But since you have noticed this pattern, the best thing is for you to seek to know God's will about it. You know, I think you need to just take some time and abandon yourself at his feet yeah. to hear what he will say to you. The first part of Psalm 85 verse 8 says, I will listen with expectancy to hear what God, the Lord, will say to me. For the Lord will speak peace to his people. See, you are his child and he has a unique destiny mapped out for you. You can't, you can't just assume and settle for this simply because there is a pattern. The pattern could mean anything. God might just be trying to get your attention or it could just be a mere coincidence. See, I don't have all the answers. But I know that consulting with him will give you all the clarity that you need. It does. I don't know if I see you. Honestly, I haven't been praying about this thing. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really been heavy on my heart, but I just haven't been able to bring myself to pray about it. Then we shouldn't be having this conversation, sis. You know, I think we put ourselves in a lot of trouble when we try to risk. Yeah. When we try to reason out and make assumptions about what the plan of God might be for our lives, the mystery of the gospel is in the simplicity of the word. Hmm. Yeah? God's word is so simple, yet a lot of us find it difficult to follow, to understand, and to obey it. Let me read the scripture to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where is it? See, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on Him to guide you and He will lead you wherever you go. Let me guess. Proverbs chapter 3, right? Yes, ma'am. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. This instruction is so simple, yet a lot of us don't follow it. We try to lean on our own understanding and that of other people. I'm not going to tell you that marrying someone with a sickle cell trait is God's will for you, simply because it was his will for me. No, no. What God is doing with and through my life is synonymous with my journey, likewise yours. That is why you cannot afford to compare yourself with anyone else. My marriage to Ben has not been all rosy, <laughs> says I tell you. We have been through some very rough times. And the only reason this union is still standing is because God gave us his word at the beginning. 
you cannot afford to make a destiny altering decision like the choice of who to marry based on what you see hear or how you feel you have to be completely led by the lord if you desire a marriage that can be used for his glory I love you so much. You're my favorite cousin. You give the best advice. <laughs> Having a child with a sickle cell disease is not a joke. It can frustrate the life out of you if you venture into it without a personal word from the Lord. Richard, Richard, yes, yes. please can we talk? What's the time? It's 2.45 a.m. Tokumbo, I have so many things to do in the morning. Please, can we sleep? I'm sorry, but I just need five minutes of your time. I'm troubled. I can't sleep. I just want us to talk. Okay. I'm listening. Please, face me now. Okay. Oh, I'm listening. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I didn't mean those words. I said to you, I said them out of frustration, and I honestly wish I could take them back. I am so sorry, sweetheart. Ah. Tokumbo, you caught me in fatter. Tokumbo, you said I lack the anointing to reproduce myself. You blamed me for our childlessness. Now you say you are sorry. I know. I know there's nothing I can say now to let you know how much I regret those words. I don't know what came over me. You are my husband, my head, my pastor. Ah, I am so sorry for disrespecting the grace and anointing of God upon you, upon your life. In that manner, I crossed the line. And I am sorry. Honestly, I haven't been able to face God since Thursday. I have been a mess. Please forgive me. Please. It is well. Get up. Get up. No. Let me remain like this. I insist. Get up. Please. Say you forgive me. The issue is not about me forgiving you. Regardless of your actions, it is my responsibility as your husband to love you as Christ loves the church. But Tokumbo, you hurt me so deep. Your words like a dagger to my soul. Your words caught me so deep. I bled and I'm still bleeding. No. And I'm sorry. Oh. I don't know what you want from me. You knew there was a possibility of us having infertility issues. But you insisted that we should get married. I have done tests, undergone treatment, yet Nothing is happening. You have tried to come up. So I understand what you are going through. But what I don't understand is why you have become a nag 
with a very poisonous tongue. I still don't understand. In the last two years, you have become almost unbearable to live with Tokumba. You nag, you complain, and you are so irritable. I don't, I don't want, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore. And that is the truth. What you did on Thursday night is the height of it for me. You called me in fatal. It reminded me of how we got here in the first place. There wouldn't have been any accident if you hadn't spoken so rudely on that day. Oh, Richard, I'm sorry. I know it's all my fault. I'm sorry. Yeah, Tokumba. Hola, like Tokumba. <sighs> At this point, I honestly think we should take some time to see the face of God personally on the next step, especially you. 18 years is a long time to wait. We both know that you are 100% fine. But as for me, I may, I may never be able to father a child. And you know, our 18th year wedding anniversary is in a few weeks. I would rather you be happy with another man than to see you miserable with me. Your joy is my priority. And if getting a divorce is what you need, I'm willing to fight for one. But Richard, why are you saying all this? Because it is the truth. I'm giving you a choice again. <sighs> Take some time to pray and think about what I'm saying. I mean, we need to make a choice. And one more thing. Please, I don't want this conversation reported to Pastor Matthew and Pastor Helen. I know they are our spiritual parents, but I don't think they can change my mind about this. I want this conversation kept strictly between you and I. Aww. We both agreed to take the leap of faith. So hard we can't explain Sometimes the road won't be an easy one You've got to have a shoulder to lean on So we'll just try Problem. Today, this is the problem. Oh, Today, that is the problem. Shola, I, I, I can explain. I can explain, Shola. I can explain. I can explain. What do you want to say? I'm sorry. Go ahead and say. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell me. Explain <sighs> it. Shola, I, I don't know what came over me. I think the first oh called better me. Tunde, you <sighs> promised this will never happen again. Well, I'm sorry. Tunde, you promised. Well, I'm, 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 I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Don't touch me. <laughs> Tunde, please, I want to ask you a question. 
and I need you to tell me the truth. How long has this been going on? Shola, please. Don't beg me. I need you to answer the question today. How long have you been back at it? It's um, it's like eight months now. Today, Darcy, you have killed me. Oh Jesus, this has been going on under my nose, and I didn't know. <sighs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I allowed the flesh to get the better of me. I, I, I need help, please. I, I need help. Tunde, you let this happen. And you should be ashamed of yourself. Is this what I get after all these years, Tunde? Oh, God. The last time I told you that if this ever happens again, that you will see the other side of me, I was not joking. Yeah. Right now, you disgust me so much, I can't even bear to look at you. Shola, please. What are you doing? You know you can't follow me. Just stay away from me. Lord, what am I doing? This is not what I need right now. Father, you said in Psalm 16 verse 10 that you will not leave my soul in seal. Nor will you allow your only one to see corruption. But my eyes have seen corruption, Lord. My childlessness has brought shame and corruption to your name in my life. 18 years and there is no single child to call my own. This is not right, Lord. Deliver me from this bottomless pit of infertility with your outreach and I want to father my own children. I need you to speak your peace into my heart and my soul. I love my wife and you know it. But we can't keep patching things up, Lord. Show me the way forward, Lord. My soul wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. My soul wait for the Lord. More than those who watch for the morning. Hmm. Yes. More than those who watch for the morning. Jesus. Lord, shine your revelation and light to my soul. Teach me what to do. Ah, help me, Lord. Daddy, when did you come? You are welcome. Thank you. Have your seat, Richard. Thank you for coming, sir. Tokes called you, right? <laughs> I knew she would. Always trying to explain herself out of every mess she makes. I hope she gave you the full story this time. It is all her fault, daddy. Can you imagine her calling me infertile? Oh. She ridiculed me. I am so hot. She rubbish your anointing upon my life. The same talks who told me we will be fine. Look me in the eyes 
and told me she's tired of waiting for you. Ah, talks. Daddy, she gave up on the promise you gave to her for us. My whole world collapsed when she said that I have nothing to hold on to. So what's the plan? What are you going to do now? Of course, I told her to go and pray. I know it is wrong for me to propose divorce as an option because you hate divorce. But I am not leaving her. That is the truth. I just said that to punish her. I can't leave my wife. I love her so much. Richard, did you hear my question? I'm not asking you about Tokumba. I'm talking to you. Richard, what do you intend to do? I don't know, Lord. Talks has been a source of courage for me over the years. I found my strength in her strength. She was so convinced about my healing. Her faith was strong enough for both of us. But now that she's no longer sure about us, I don't know what to believe anymore. Okay, Richard, it saddens my heart that even after all these years of working with me, there are still areas of your life that I do not have access to. You call me Lord, but I'm not Lord over your entire life. No, Daddy. It is in you that I live, move, and have my being. You are my Lord, God. All that I am is found in you. Hmm. Hmm. And I am complete in you, who is the head of all principalities and power. That's not true, Richard. If I am Lord over your life, you will find strength and courage in my world and not in your wife. I have broken and disappointed in your wife because her trust in me uh, has been the anchor of your hope, Richard. You trusted her for me to heal you instead of trusting me for her to stay with you. I was with you before the accident and was present with you during the accident. The devil wanted to cut of your life, but you prevailed over him because my presence was, was with you. I was with you when the doctor diagnosed you, but you refused to acknowledge my presence, Richard. You assumed that I knew about it and allowed it, which is true. I allowed it for a reason, but you have refused to seek my face for the way forward. Richard, I know you are disappointed, angry, and burdened by your inability to father a child. But I can't help you because you have refused to give your pain to me. Hiding your pain from me and relying in your own strength and wisdom has kept you in this situation. I made you, Richard, and I'm the only one who can fix you. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every moment of my heart and soul, and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. Mm. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, mm. and you know all the words I'm about to speak even before I start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You have gone into my future to prepare the way and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the arm of my past. You have laid your hand on me. This is just too wonderful, deep and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. Where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? I am sorry, Lord. I am so sorry. Please, forgive me for thinking I can handle this on my own. Forgive me for not trusting you enough for my healing. 
Lord, I admit that I need your help and healing. Heal me and make me whole, Lord. Richard, if you read my word in the book of Hagar, Hagar chapter 2, verse 18 to 19, my word says, and I say to you then, that think about this 18th day of December, the day when the foundation of the lost temple was laid. Think carefully. I'm giving you a promise now. While the seed is still in the barn, you have not yet harvested your grain, and your grapevines, fig trees, pomegranates, and olive trees have not yet produced their crops. But from this day onward, I will bless you. I shall return to you and perfect all that concerns your body. You shall father a child, and your wife shall conceive according to the time of life. I have a plan, and I will no longer hide my faith from you. My plan for you shall be clear, and you shall know what to do. But you must hold on to me as the anchor of your soul. My word must be the anchor of your hope in me. And you must hold onto it firmly because your life depends on it. Stop worrying about tomorrow. I have my plans. I have my hands on her and my grip on you both is tight. I won't let go until I have fulfilled my promises to you. You just focus on me and my world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. Hey, guys, chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. Hey, guys, chapter 2, 18 to 19. Wait a minute. What is today? What is today's date? Friday, December the 18th. Today's date is Friday, December the 18th. Oh Lord, I magnify your name. Jesus, I bless you. I bless your name. I receive this promise with thanksgiving and thank you because you will bring it to pass. If I could do this on my own, I won't be here. I have wronged Shola greatly. She's moved out of her bedroom to the guest room. And she's not uttered a word since she found out. I have totally lost my peace. I'm my mind is at unrest, I, I'm just, just so ashamed of myself. Hmm. This is really serious. They come down, see? How did they let this happen? I'm just so, I'm so sorry, Pastor. I, it, it was something that started Innocently, but I, it has become like a stronghold, something I've been battling with behind closed doors. And uh, I've been praying to God for mercy. I, and I, I, I just ask, I just pleading for forgiveness. I. Hmm. It is well. I would like to begin a seven-day prayer and fasting tomorrow. My wife and I will pray along with you. I want you to take time to humble yourself before the Lord and ask Him for His mercy. You need to consecrate yourself and rededicate your life to the Lord. Uh, is your wife at home or is she working? She works nights. I I'm not sure she's alone. I don't know. 
Hello, Dickness. How are you doing, Ma? God bless you, Ma. My wife and I will love to visit you and Deacon next Thursday by God's grace. Mm, about 6 p.m. God bless you and honor you. All right. See you then. Have a good evening. No problem. I want you to know that your witness and what is happening to you is rooted in the lies of the enemy and his plans to destroy godly marriages in this end time. The devil has three major assignments in a believer's life. John 10, 10 to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You have allowed him enough foothold over your life and you must break free from this demonic habit. I will send you some prayer points and Bible verses later tonight. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Thank you very much. Now you say you are sorry. Please, I don't want this conversation reported to Pastor Matthew and Pastor Helen. I know they are our spiritual parents, but I don't think they can change my mind about this. today all right I do need this hello mommy I love you ma I'm doing well ma and how are you and daddy we're fine your father left for a business meeting in Abuja this morning we should be back by this weekend I've told him to take things easy You need to slow things down. Ah, ah. Please. You know, as we trust God to grant you both good health, we also need to apply wisdom where necessary. I'm not in support of all this busting and busting that Dad is doing. We've talked about this, but he won't listen. I think I have to call him again. He's your father. You both can do whatever you like with each other, but I didn't call you. I'm calling you to let you know. 
to know that I'll be coming to the state in the summer. What's going on? That's not the response I was expecting from you. I thought you'd be more excited to see me. I am. But I'm just curious as to why you're visiting us again so soon. You were just here. October now, mommy. Anyway, I'm now coming directly to Texas. I'm coming to Florida to visit my niece, Dallas. You know this is our first child and I need to be there for her. It is the least I could do for my late sister. Yeah, that makes sense. I haven't spoken with her in a while. I need to check on her soon, yes. You should, because she's pregnant. You will never know what pregnant women go through. It's not an easy process. It is my prayer every day that God will grant you the privilege not that in this world, like the church people call me. Okay, so you're not getting your time again. Okay, I'm your time is going. I'm here, Mom, and I can hear you. I thought you got disconnected because you didn't say anything. But what do you want me to say, Mommy? You have said everything. Anyway, can I call you back later? I'm actually at work. Okay, take care of yourself. Bye. Ah, when mommy speaks, honestly, sometimes it's just so annoying. Always saying the wrong things to people. Ah, oh, gosh. Lord, I need your strength. I'm tired. I need strength. Deliver me from this feeling of hopelessness and weariness, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. Forgive me for the ways I've used my mouth negatively in this marriage. Wash me clean. Reveal yourself to me. Heal my heart, my weary heart, Lord. Show yourself strong. I don't want to lose my marriage. I don't want to lose my husband, but I am tired of waiting. I need a turn around. I wait silently as long as it takes for you to rescue me. You alone are my rock, my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. That's what your word says in Psalm 62. This is one and two. Come through for me, Lord. My eyes are on you. Come through for me, Lord. Come through for me, Lord. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Just calling to check on you and Pastor Cook, sir. Trusting God that you are doing much better, sir. We are. God is in control. We appreciate your love, support, and prayers. How are Dumi and the twins? Yeah, they are doing well. God is faithful. Praise God for that. Please tell Dumi that I'm missing her around here. I know she's working on that road, but that is not an excuse for her to stay away. Pastor Ridge, you know her too well. You already know the excuse she will give when you call her out. I will let her know. We'll definitely find time to come visit soon by the grace of God. 
My love to Pastor Tuxa. We do. God bless you. for you to stay away from visiting them. I told him we'll try to visit them very soon. How are they doing? Yeah, he said they are fine. Yeah. We'll just keep praying for them. Okay. I will find time to call him and pass the talks before the week runs out. I meant to tell you, babe. I spoke with Abby earlier today and she shared something that has been on my mind all day. What is it about? She told me that she went to visit with mom and dad over the weekend and observed that their relationship is a bit strained. Really? Yeah, and I wouldn't have been worried about it, hmm. but she also mentioned that mom was sleeping in the guest room. Really? Yeah, and that seems old. My parents have been married for almost 35 years now, and they have never slept apart under the same roof. I'm trying not to think much of it, but I can't seem to get it out of my mind. I think something is wrong. <sighs> That's strange, truly. But don't let that bother you too much, okay? We'll keep praying for them, and I think we need to find time to go and visit them. But when was the last time you spoke to Mommy? I did last week, and she sounded fine. I called her as soon as I got off the phone with Abby, but she didn't pick up. And I didn't even bother to call that because I figured it would be at work. I just hope everything is okay. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Just take it easy. Everything will be fine, okay? Okay. Oh, let me go wake up this up. It's time for her to take her medications. I will be with you soon. Let me just quickly submit this uh, professor. Then I will be on the road. Alright. Alright. No problem. Yeah. Daddy, oh, Daddy, you heard me. Thanks for coming. You know, I will always hear you talk about If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and come from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. For what is this that you have done? <sighs> I'm so sorry. Ah, and I'm ashamed. Lord, I allowed my frustration to get the better part of me. I said mean things to Richard, and I'm so ashamed of myself. I know you have warned me severely about misusing my tongue. Ah, I'm afraid I blew it this time. Ah, I have made a huge mess, Lord, and I don't even know how to fix it. I am so sorry. Well, I know you are truly sorry to the Lord. But I need you to walk on taming your tongue. I can't do this for you, but my grace is available to you, but you must tap into it to the Lord. Look, the turnaround that you are asking me for begins from you. 
Don't you know that careless words stab like a wound? And but wise words bring healing. Talk about your husband's healing start from you. You can call him a father and expect him to father the child. His body will respond to the words of your mouth. If you truly desire a turnaround, then you must change your language to come up. Who is the man who desires life and loves men days? That you may see good. Please keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking the same. Hmm. Yes, Lord. I receive grace to change my language. Grace to use my tongue wisely. But Lord, what about this waiting? I'm getting tired. Remember your promise to me before I got married to Richard. You said I would be a fruitful wine in his house and our children will surround our table like olive plant. But it's been 18 years, Lord, and I'm yet to see it. I know you are tired to come up, but my promise is this time. I haven't changed my mind. But this waiting is hard. But I'm trying. It's getting longer. And, you know, it's longer than I anticipated. I'm running out of patience and I'm not handling it well. What do I do, Lord? Oh, Isaiah 30 15. Isaiah 30 15. Isaiah 30 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But you would not. Hmm. I hear you, Lord. Please help me. Help me to bridle my tongue, Lord. Teach me how to be calm and restful even in this waiting period. Teach me how to be quiet even when I'm tempted to complain. Teach me how to wait even as I await your salvation, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord, for answered prayers. Thank you, Father, for revealing yourself to me. Thank you, Father, Lord God Almighty, for coming through for me. Be thou magnified, O Lord. Ah, guess who called me while I was at work today to request for a counseling appointment? Who? Ruth? <laughs> oh, really? Now she wants to talk? <laughs> I don't understand some of these people. I called and called, left several messages on her phone, but she couldn't manage to return a single phone call. Then she goes behind my back to call my husband. <laughs> I have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> 